A narcisztikusnak, mint hallhattuk, csak időnként vannak mazohista vágyai, de előszeretettel keresnek olyan partnert, például borderline vagy kódependenst, aki neki alárendelődik vagy behódol. Ők élvezhetik is a mazohista szerepet a szexben. Ez például remek traumakötést tud létrehozni köztük. Talán emiatt is választja őket. Mégis ritka, hogy ebben egymás hosszú távú partnerévé válnak. Szem, kérlek mesélj az alárendelődés a mazohizmus iránti vágyról. Miért olyan erős ez, főleg a nőkben? Milyen gyermekkori traumára vezethető vissza? So, most recent studies on human sexuality um, indicate that all women without exception um, prefer to adopt the submissive role they have submissive fantasies the vast majority of female sexual fantasies involve submission one kind or another and almost in almost one fifth of the cases it involves rape rape fantasies are very common among women so submission seems to be built in built into the female mind. Whether it is built into the female mind because of genetic factors or whether it is built in because of social and cultural factors that women were educated to be submissive, conditioned to be submissive over the millennia, over thousands of years, we don't know. We don't know yet. It is interesting to note though that even liberated, emancipated women after feminism in totally egalitarian societies like in Scandinavia have identical submissive fantasies and identical submissive desires in sex would like to assume the submissive role in sex. A strong, leading, domineering, dominant man still is the major turn-on for women. Um, So it is far less difficult to find a submissive woman than, than most people imagine. Um, for example, for the narcissist. It's not that the narcissist goes through life unable to find uh, willing, uh, sexually submissive uh, women. It's not the case at all. What is more difficult to find are women who are into kink, which involves as one element, submission, but as many other elements, which have nothing to do with submission, so that's difficult. Difficult to find women who would willingly participate in, in group sex or threesomes or with multiple partners. And difficult to find women who would accept extreme, extreme sexual practices or uncommon sexual practices, golden showers and so on. These are difficult to find. But the submission element is pretty classic and very, very common among women. Narcissists do not bond with women uh, on a sexual level. And they do not bond with women on an emotional level. And they do not bond with women or men on any level. Narcissists are incapable of attachment and bonding. Narcissists are conditioned or become addicted to a source of high-grade narcissistic supply. And they mislabel, the narcissist mislabels what he feels and calls it love. Or if he's very sophisticated, dependence. Because there's a lack in the language to describe the kind of, a, of attachment that the narcissist has with his sources of supply. But I think the closest would be attachment to a very good pusher, drug pusher. A drug pusher who is empathic and compassionate and smiling and affectionate, provides you with very good, high quality, high grade drugs in a reliable manner, doesn't charge too much, and generally is a good friend. So that's more or less the, the relationship. Submission, therefore, is not a determinant of the strength of a relationship or the duration or the length of the relationship. What is a determinant is whether the submission comes as a form of narcissistic supply. So if the woman presents her submission as narcissistic supply, it will have power over the narcissist. If she tells him, for example, I'm submissive to you because you are irresistible. You know, not because I like to be submissive, but because with you I'm submissive. You are unique, you are irresistible. Then it, she converts the submission into a source of supply and then there is some bonding or attachment taking place as long as the supply continues.
can be submission, what kind of childhood trauma can be? No, I don't think so. no? so submission is built into the, the female psyche. And submission in the case of the is the in the case of the narcissist, as we have discussed, is a way to connect with mm -hmm. with uh, love and intimacy via pain. It's simply the narcissist's way of accessing love and intimacy. In other words, the emphasis is not on the pain. The submission is not the important part. The pain is not the important part. It's simply the only path the narcissist knows to love and intimacy, which are the important part. Mm -hmm. Uh, theoretically, it's possible to co recondition the narcissist and to teach him that there are other paths to love and intimacy, not pain. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, it's possible. So in that case, he would uh, stop seeking submissive, you know, he would stop seeking pain and he would adopt the other way. But uh, it's not like this is his way of re-traumatizing himself or revisiting the past or regressing. Simply, that's the only way that he experiences true intimacy in love. The irony is that when the narcissist visits a dominatrix and is disciplined, that's the only time he experiences true love and intimacy. True. Not fake. But when he's with his long-suffering, long-loving wife, he experiences attachment to the narcissistic supply that she provides. It has nothing to do with love. So that's the sad irony that it's far easier, for example, for, for the narcissist to experience love and intimacy, however briefly, with strangers, on condition that these strangers are willing to hurt him or to cause him pain or to sub, you know, make him submissive or to torture him or to, or to abuse him. Or to, so, and that is true, that is real love. That is real love and real intimacy. It's a remnant, very old remnant from the time before the false self. It's not the true self, but it's the time before the false self. Beszéljünk egy kicsit a fétisekről. Népszerű fétis például az age play, az életkor játék, egy olyan szerepjáték, amelyben egy vagy több partner úgy viselkedik, mintha valójában máskorúak lennének. A kellékek és a ruházat, például fodrosz ruhák, pelenkák, gyermekjátékok, kiságyak használhatók a szeánsz során. Ez a fét is lehet szexuális vagy nem szexuális is. Ha szexuális, akkor nem ritka, hogy a vérfertőzéses elemeket is beépítik a szerepjátékba. Erre példa lehet, amikor egy idősebb korú játékos vállalja egy idősebb rokon szerepét, például anya, apa, nagynénje, nagybátyja vagy testvére. Gyakran fordul elő, hogy az egyik partner csecsemőként, gyermekként, serdülőként vagy tinédzserként viselkedik. Az infantilizmus a vérfertőzés fétise, és az apalány fétisek is mind az életkor általános formái. Ez például miért népszerű a narcisztikus vagy pszichopata számára? A praxisomban vannak olyan narcisztikusok, akinek bevallottan ez a fétise. Azt tapasztaltam, hogy számukra ez a vágy felerősödött akkor, amikor új forrást találtak, új partnert, akinek például bébikorú vagy totyogó kisgyermeke volt, és a szemük előtt voltak a pelenkák, a cumisüveg, a cumi, kiságy, hintőpor. Köze van ennek a fétisnek az egyik legnagyobb narcisztikus devianciához, a pedofiliához? Lehet annak egyfajta legitimizált vagy látens verziója? Uh, again... Incest, incest fantasies, um, age, inappropriate role play, and so on, um, pretty common among healthy people. There's nothing unusual in that. Um, when the narcissist enters the scene, they acquire a different meaning and different psychodynamic or psychological um, importance. So the narcissist is a child, is a child, and many partners of narcissists would tell you that the narcissist has many childish and infantile behaviors. There are even some narcissists who talk to their intimate partners using a baby voice or, a, you know, a child's voice. So infantilization is very common narcissistic behavior uh, outside the sexual scene. When a narcissist uses a baby voice, he regresses to childhood and doesn't involve sex in any way. When the narcissist refuses to acquire adult skills, 
refuses to have a driving license, driver's license, refuses to learn how to swim, refuses to... So also, this refusal to acquire adult skills is a form of infantilization. When the narcissist refuses to be responsible, refuses to hold a job, refuses to have children, it's also a refusal to accept age. It's a, a wish to remain a child. So there are many manifestations of the narcissist's wish to remain a child, and in the sexual realm, in the sexual area, this would tend to take on the, the, the guise of a role play. Or, uh, so no, it's not connected to pedophilia. It's connected to infantilization. Pedophilia is an interesting topic in itself, and, uh, and a very, very complex to topic, and has little to do with narcissism. It is true that m many narcissists, uh, some narcissists are pedophiles. But again, their pedophilia is not classic pedophilia. Pedophilia is actually a universal phenomenon. A universal phenomenon that is repressed and suppressed by society and converted into a taboo for very good reasons. Because there's no consent possible, and because some of the recipients of the pedophile's attention, the children, are harmed. So pedophilia should be criminalized and should be I'm not sure it's a mental illness, but should be criminalized, that's for sure. Still, it's very, very common. Um, in some of the studies we made, we discovered that 20% of the population, adult male population, have pedophile fantasies, sex with children, explicit sex with children. Um, pedophile tendencies are, are very, very common. Uh, Active pedophiles are very few, but f fantasy, pedophilia, and so on is very, very common. And because it's very common, it cannot be really pathologized. So the narcissist, when he is a pedophile, it has little to do with, the, with children. It has to do more with freedom, so it's a form of defiance. It has to do with control. It has to do with many things, but not with the child as a sexual object. Uh, here, in these role plays, the child is a sexual object. That's why the two phenomena are not related. Um, in, the, in these role plays, the narcissist regresses to a state where again he can surrender. It's a form of surrender. The child doesn't have decision-making capacity, analytic capacity, and so on, and has to accept the will of others. So that relates to an earlier question that you asked. It's another way of taking a vacation from life. It's another way of suspending the energy depleting need to maintain the narcissistic personality and the control over the environment and so on. It's, um, and also, again, again, it connects to a period where he had love and intimacy and to a very large extent pain. So the pain here is manifested by being controlled being submissive, being punished, being that's how the pain is, is expressed. But again, it's this linkage, pain, love, and intimacy. But it is, it's not a, a pedophile thing. It's infantilization that I mentioned at the beginning of the interview.